Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest joining us today. Yes, sir. Steven Jackson. The legendary Breakfast Club. <laughs> and the legendary Steven the Jackson. The legendary Steven Jackson. <laughs> One half of all the smoke, man. I'm I'm really happy y'all doing the, the Malice in the Palace documentary, though. Yeah, I'm excited about that, too. A lot of people want to hear that story uh, before we start. Shout out to my brother, Matt Barnes. Though. Absolutely. Can't be up here without showing him love and uh, Showtime. But the bra, I can't wait for y'all to see it. You know, I watch that a lot. I just watched her fight a lot randomly for no reason. Yeah, he showed it to me about five times. For no reason. For no reason. I don't know, because it's just, it's a lot that's intriguing about it, but I always say, man, I don't think Ron was too much in the wrong. Today he wouldn't be. Okay. Today, I don't even think we'll get suspended the amount of games we got suspended with all that's going on today, because you got to realize we was at work. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and, and you throw a beer in somebody's face in the bar. That's assault. That's right. So for people that don't understand, that don't, that don't know, break down what happened. Y'all were playing an NBA game. Pistons. Right. We was playing um, the uh, Detroit Pistons. The Pistons. And uh, that year, that was my first year on this team. Uh, they had a big battle the year before in the Eastern Conference Finals, but we were the team to beat this year. And this was the game to make the statement that we was going for a championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ended up blowing them out. We we're uh, up like 15, 20 points. I think with like forty five seconds left. And uh, we had the free throw line. And I guess Ron owed Ben Wallace a foul from the previous Eastern Conference Finals. I wasn't on the team, so I didn't understand the beef. I and Ron was going to give him that foul. You know that. <laughs> he don't He don't miss the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And um, somebody put a batter in his back. Y'all see, y'all hear mm-hmm. about that. And he ended up fouling Ben, you know, after he shot a free. I was at the free throw line, and I heard him say that. So I ran back and guarded Ben so Ron wouldn't foul him so we can get out of here. You know, make make our claim that we coming mm-hmm. for the championship and everything cool, but Ron still found a way to foul him <laughs> while I was guarding him. <laughs> while you were guarding him, he while still I, I heard him and I ran back to guard Ben, so it wouldn't happen, and it still happened. And at that time, Ben had just lost a family member. Yes, sir. a lot of people didn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So he he wasn't even supposed to play that game, and uh, he reacted like anybody would. You know, he defended himself. And it got to the point where, you How know. How hard was the foul when Ron Artest gave him the foul for people? It was, it, it was unnecessary Okay. more than it was hard. You know what I mean? And Ben understood that it was unnecessary. And um, and he pushed Ron head off to like the yes, he did. 10th row in the parking lot. Correct. Out the stadium. And um, we ended up breaking it up. You know, we kind of we calmed it down. I think uh, it was to a point where we all was ready to fight each other. You know what I mean? The only person I didn't want to see was Derek Coleman mm-hmm. uh, on that side. Yeah, was he D.C.? I didn't want to see no parts of D.C. Oh, ben, ben and D.C. look like some strong brothers, D.C. man. Strong. Like, <laughs> you know, D.C. strong. And, 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 we know, and I know my history of Derek Coleman. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? And Ben, one thing about Ben, he got bigger by the second. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? I know my weight class. Yeah. And uh, we ended up breaking it up, though, and uh, kind of calmed it down because, like I said, me and Rip Hamilton, a lot of guys, chance, we were all cool. So it wasn't really no need to fight. But, um... I think when the when the, when the fan when the fans got involved and threw a beer in Ron's face after Reggie Miller had calmed him down, I think that's when uh, everything got out of hand. When Ron went into the stands, and of course I went right behind him to defend my teammate, and uh, we ended up getting suspended. You know, Ron got suspended the whole season. Mm-hmm. I got suspended thirty games. We lost millions of dollars over somebody throwing over a fan throwing a beer. And see what I did, what I was thinking always. What if Ron hadn't gone in the stands? What would have happened to that fan? Just removal from the game? Nothing, probably. It's probably nothing, right? Nothing. And uh, then, yeah, I, they deserved it. I ain't going to lie. It felt good to hear the fan. Right. <laughs> did it, it felt real good. I saw Ron Artest said they're friends now. That's what, I didn't like that shit. Yeah, he said he's friends with the fan that did that. It was a bet. Yeah, yeah. He, he talked to the guy and, all, and we didn't. I mean, me and Joe didn't agree with that because we lost millions of dollars behind that, mm-hmm. defending him. And, um, you know, I love it. When you came in the stands, it's like the beat dropped. You know, yeah. when a record come on and it just be building up. But then as soon I'm as Steven familiar. came in, the beat dropped. But, I'm, you know, being from Port Arthur, Texas, I'm familiar with that type of situation. Mm-hmm. And I, the love I got for y'all, if I'm with y'all and something like that, I'm riding. Mm-hmm. And we'll mm-hmm. deal with the consequences later. And that was that situation. But I think if, 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 if like you said, if we wouldn't have never responded like that, that fan wouldn't have never dealt with nothing. It would just been another day. Mm-hmm. Right. And aside from just losing the money, it's also like you had said, basketball was your life. Mm-hmm. That was what you did. Like, what else were you doing? You know what I'm saying? That's what you were brought up. You were playing basketball your whole life. And even for Ron Artest, he had said he was in therapy before that. Mm-hmm. And so not being able to play for all those games, I'm sure mentally that takes a toll on you as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, 30 games for me, that's almost $3 million that I lost. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you don't get that back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just That's one punch for almost $3 million. So, yeah, and, and, and having the game taken away from you, it was a depressing time. 
You know what I mean? I, I I knew how to deal with my with my issues. You know, I didn't need therapy or nothing like that. But being at home, one is seeing your team lose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And, and your and your children. You know, like mm -hmm. your children, they see it all over the news. People saying things about you, calling you a thug, all kind of stuff. Right. You know what I mean? I, and I had never been in trouble in my life, Angela, and up, up until that point. You know, wow. especially in court or nothing like that. So. But people, and I still live with that today. Like mm -hmm. all the good stuff that I've done in my life, people still walk up to me. Man, I remember the bra, and I hate talking about it sometimes because they they not saying it to give me props. They they're saying it to be negative or to get a negative conversation out of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I I, I kind of hate that that I still got to deal with it, talking about it. But at the end of the day, you know, I'd rather be there for my teammates than not be there for them. When you look at the footage and you see all the reporters, like the thugs that started the fight, they ran into the stands there. Instead of looking at it like you were defending yourself. It was an honorable fight. And you're actually trying to help out your teammates. Bill Walton said some of the most racist stuff that you could say at a time like that. And nobody said nothing to him. You know, and, and even after that, you know, he... I remember when I was in San Antonio, Bill Walton came out and said, what a horrible shot by a horrible human being. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And 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 they didn't say nothing about wow. it. So these are the type of things that were said about us. You know what I mean? And J even when J Jermaine O'Neal, he spoke about it. And like when he got suspended, he got his games reduced, you know, because we had to go to arbitrators and talk to the league about it. And he was explaining how it affected him and his relationship with his kids. You know what I'm saying? Because they seeing and they hearing all this stuff about them. Like, they live with me every day, but hearing this stuff every day have them looking at me sideways now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody never thought about that aspect of it. Did y'all get sued from, from the people in the stands, the fans? No. No, they tried. They uh, try. Actually, one of them tried to sue Jermaine. Uh, when Jermaine the one Jermaine hit, he um, came to court with a neck brace and all that. And, you know, we were smart enough to hire private uh, detect private investigators on him. He was in Vegas and all that. When he came <laughs> back, When he came back to court with the same neck brace on, and uh, the judge like, well, I think you lying, sir, and played all the footage of seeing him in Vegas and all that. So they tried to do some dumb stuff. They, they tried it, but it didn't work. Which one? The one Jermaine leveled on the floor? Yeah, laid him that out. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, he, Jermaine, 803, was, Columbia, was, South Carolina. Yeah, all he day. laid him out. That was a good one. Were you, were you mad at some of the other uh, players that didn't come in and help when y'all were in the stands? Because y'all were brawling. At, 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 and there was a lot of people that just was like watching y'all and just went to the locker room. At that time, I ain't going to lie, I did. Because, you know, after watching it, I seen the footage of a lot of people just standing around. And just think, it's 15 of us and there's 30,000 people in there. Just imagine they all turned on us. You yeah. know what I mean? Some mm -hmm. of us have probably been dead and y'all worrying about y'all job. So it's a lot of guys that I looked at differently after that. I, I, I can't lie, it's a lot of guys that I did not fool with at all after that. Did you ever feel like? Did you ever feel like your life was truly in danger in the in the palace? Nah, because I've been in worse situations. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My life was really in danger. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up in Port Arthur, Texas. So I, I I didn't at the time. I, I I just knew. You know, it was my adrenaline. So I didn't even think of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My adrenaline was pumping at the time. I was just trying to be that for my teammate. But looking back at it, it could have got dangerous. We was in Detroit. Yeah. Word, word. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Luckily, we wasn't in uh, downtown Detroit. You yeah. know what I'm Auburn, saying? In the city. The Auburn Hills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we was on the outskirts. And if we would have been in the city, it could have got bad. We Somebody could have lost their life. Mm -hmm. So there's never before seen footage that's going to be on this Netflix special. So what are some things that people will see that, and are there things you've never seen before too? Yeah, well, I mean, not only this, this footage, but you get to hear the stories. Of, of of Ron and what he was going through and Jermaine O'Neal what was going on through his mind during that time and me and me as well, but you're gonna see a lot of footage the way it could break it breaks it down of how we really wasn't wrong, mm -hmm. you know we really weren't wrong and how the, the the people that are hired to to keep the peace between the stands between the fans and the players. They were all elderly people that couldn't do nothing. That's still to this day in the to, game. You know what I'm saying? Still right, to this day. right. They can't keep people if they tried to. They couldn't keep no fans off the court. You know what I mean? So. All that is highlighted on this doc, and shout out to Netflix. Why do you think they don't change that now? Because in all these venues, right, and I'm noticing now when I'm renting venues out, they say you got to have security. But then their security, you be like, they can't secure anything. So why do you think that is like that? Because you see a lot of elderly people, you see a lot of older people, but if something happens, they can't stop people from getting on that court. Either it's to save money or to give people in those, I guess, in those areas or in, the, in those, in those in the, where people live their jobs. You know, try to help them get jobs. But you, you don't even have to put a move on these people. You can just and walk right by them and get on the court if you wanted to. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to put your best Barry Sanders move yeah. on them. You can just walk right around them and, and actually touch a player if you wanted to. So I don't I don't think it's about protecting the players. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really don't think it's about that. The other day there was, I think, an incident on the court. And I think somebody's private security ran on the court and stopped Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, right? Yeah. So what do you think about situations like that? Like, you know, Kevin Durant's like, yo, this is my private security. That's his job, to make sure nobody puts hands on me. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but not when it's a player. If it's a fan, yeah, you do that. But it was another player. Let Kevin handle that on his own. You know what I mean? And then at the end of the day, if you know 
anything about the game, you know Kevin and PJ are, are friends. Mm-hmm. So they just compete. And I don't, it, it'll never get to the point where they're throwing blows. So I think he was being a little too extra. And I know him, but he was being a little too extra. If it was a fan, yeah, run out there and do it, do your job. But when it's, when it's another team, a player he played against, that was just too much. What, what do you think the league should do to protect players from fans? Uh, that's a good question. Um that's a good question. I really don't have that answer because I, I don't want to be the person to say not to give these elderly people jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the person to say that. But at the same time, if a player reacts a certain way, then they shouldn't be fine the way they do. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If if, 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 if a player decides to go in the stands and defend himself, hey, if he was disrespected or somebody threw a bottle at me, I should have the right to defend myself and right. not be worrying about getting suspended the whole season or mm-hmm. losing millions of dollars. You know what I mean? So I, I think it, it should be fair in some type of way. What do you mm-hmm. think would happen today if that happened? Uh, it probably would get worse. You know, I, there's no more Steven Jacksons and Ron Artestes in the <laughs> league. You know what I mean? Just Vernon Maxwell. There's none of us in the league no more. So I doubt if it'll happen. A lot of these young guys are really worried about their money and playing basketball. We didn't really care about that. But uh, if it, it happened today with, you know, the, the the way in all these cities, you see all these murders and all that stuff are all around the world, I think it'll get bad. You know what I mean? Somebody might luck up and sneak a weapon in the game. You never know. You know what I mean? So I, I think it would be worse if it happened to that magnitude today. You think those suspensions would still be, you said not as harsh, you don't think? You I think- don't No, I don't think it would be as harsh because they're going to deal with some backlash. You know what I'm saying? It's, like I said, especially with what's going on today with, with, with us fighting for our rights and all the stuff mm-hmm. that's going on with black power today. You know, I think, I think they'll think twice of how hard they'll come down on somebody. Did you ever have to talk to any of those reporters after that that were talking about the story and mischaracterizing you? Oh, yeah. I, I, I had to ask a lot of questions because I had to defend myself. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, I've, I'm not a thug. I've never been a gangster. I've done some things in my life that I regret, you know, but, but not to the point where I'm getting arrested and having to do time in jail because I was defending myself at a basketball game. Mm-hmm. We had to go to we got arrested for that. We had to go to jail for that. Wow. You know what I mean? So if, if I, I, I escaped the in the hood and escape all those situations where I don't get arrested and don't go to jail and I wait till I get into the NBA defending myself at a game to go to jail like that's crazy because I'm sure sometimes there's reporters who you think you have a good rapport with and then you hear them saying something and you're like how are you talking about me like that did you have any off the record conversations with any of them nah because you know I, I never trusted them but I like I said from watching this I heard a lot of black uh, reporters that were actually defending us during the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's one that was some that was actually on ESPN and on air and they really directed all their frustration toward the fans. Because you gotta think, I got hit with every beverage that's that right. they sold right. at the concession stand, <laughs> right, right. popcorn, candy, everything walking out that arena. And that wasn't highlighted until we did this doc. You know, nobody never talked about mm-hmm. that. We were automatically in the wrong because we was the ones making the most money. You know what I mean? We was we was a star athlete, so we should have been the bigger person at that time. But right. the guy who threw the beer started the whole thing. But ain't no rewards for that, right? Like ain't what, no if, what if Ron would have just laid there, took the beer? Ain't nobody gonna give Ron no. a bonus. Not at all. <laughs> but you know what, Sean? For, for, for your point, he did what he was told to do. Remember, you just said he he was doing therapy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what they told him to do when he gets to a point where he don't feel in control, to go lay down and, and find a, 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 a comfortable That's place. Right. And he put the headphones on. He was actually chilling. You know, he he was actually done with it, but when the beer came, like that's too disrespectful. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and uh, I, that's why that's why I didn't have no, I didn't think twice about going with him because if somebody threw he a beer tried. in my face, yeah, he tried. But if somebody threw a beer in my face, it's, it's only one thing to do after that. That's in- insane that he could be friends with him after that. I don't even see how yeah, that's crazy. they even ended up speaking. Yeah, and- that, that 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 was a little bit too much for me. Like I said, I don't I don't understand how he even had that conversation. You Ron know what I mean? Different. Because you ruined, you ruined, you're not. Metal you're, world peace. You didn't yeah, only ruin our, you know, you didn't only ruin our season and got us suspended, but you ruined Reggie Miller's chance at a championship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was Reggie's last year. And we were going to win the championship. Right. We had the best team that year. And by, yeah. by all that happened, that ruined this, this opportunity. And what about Russell Westbrook? Because it seemed like they, they all love him, him the same way. They, it seemed like they throw ish on him and, and, and bother him. What, what do you think? Because I, I think because he responds back to him. You know, it's just like on Instagram. Somebody say something crazy on Instagram, we wrong for responding because we because we famous or we have some success. Mm-hmm. And we say stuff that, that's true and really hurt people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We don't make up stuff like most people do on our pages. So they hate that Ron, I mean, they hate that uh, Russ reacts and responds to people. I love Russ because mm-hmm. sometimes these people need to hear that. Perfect example, when I played, when I, we, I was in Golden State, we played in Utah. After the brawl, they had a guy with a life-size cutout of me in the jail uniform right under the basket. Wow. wow. And the NBA allowed oh, that. damn. They allowed that. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. if I go respond to the guy, I'm wrong. 
You know what I'm saying? But you you got you have this un, under the goal for the world to see on TV games mm-hmm. with me in a jail suit. You know what I'm saying? And I actually and I, I was the bigger person. I actually went and signed it for him after the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because at, at, at that point, you know what I'm saying? I, I realized what they was trying to do. You know what I mean? Get but in your head. we always have to be the bigger person. You know what I'm saying? Even if we're wrong. But I love the fact that Russ stands up and responds to how he does. Have you what? ever had a burner account? No, I would never do that. <laughs> I'm not, that ain't my personality. I would never do that. Where, where should Russell go, man? Ah, uh, I'm hearing the Lakers. I would love to see him with the Lakers. Yeah, I would love to see him with the Lakers. I mean, I got a different, you know, I got a different outlook on what a super team is. Okay, yeah, I, I saw that, what you said about Giannis. Team, huh? That wouldn't be a super team. AD, LeBron, Russell. That it would. It would, be a, would, it would okay. be a super team, mm-hmm. but just it's like I look at players. I look at teams like okay. Uh, Jermaine O'Neal, Reggie Miller, and Ron Artest. That's a super team, right? Yeah. How, how is it not? You yeah, got yeah, defensive yeah, yeah. players here. Reggie's an all-star. Jermaine's an all-star. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's a super team, right? But they weren't saying that then. So I really think Drew Holiday, if you ask any basketball player about Drew Holiday, everybody's going to say he's one of the best players in the league. We all want to play. If you ask any, they talk highly about Drew Holiday. Mm-hmm. Chris Middleton's an all-star. Mm-hmm. So how is that not a super team when you have three good players? I think it's when the top ten players join up together. Well, this that too, but people you think the super team of guys who selling shoes are guys who right. the most famous. Mm-hmm. That's not a super team when you have three all stars or three capable possible all stars. That's a super team like to the me. Brooklyn Nets is that a super team? That's definitely yeah, a super yeah, team. But I think, when, I, think sure. a super team. I think when it happens through the draft, that's different. You know what I mean? Like how Golden State happened through the draft. Regardless the how you back do it, you got three all stars. That's true, but it's how you get it though. Why? Why? Explain that to me. Golden State was a little different. Golden State didn't. It was it happened through the draft. It just happened through the draft. Yeah. They kind of got lucky. Somebody even got even injured. the Bucks. The Bucks had well, other than the Drew Holiday trade, that happened through the draft. But but, it, but Drew Holiday is not looked at as one of the top ten players in the league either. Or Chris Middleton. But Drew Holiday's looked at one of the top three defenders in the league. True. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like like I said, even if you do it through the draft, regardless of how you do it, it you have three All Stars. How many teams have three All Stars? The draft is kind of like it's kind of like lucky, right? Because the Knicks could have had the first pick that time, and they could have got Steph Curry, or they could have got whoever, or they could have got Giannis. Like it's kind of like a lucky type. He said of it thing. doesn't matter how it happens. If yeah, it, it, it happens, you know what I'm saying? It's different in trade. So if you it. lose, they go, if you kind of like lose, they kind of well, they're not a super team because they're not in the playoffs or they're not at the top of the, of the, of the, of the brackets. In the, at the end of the season, a lot of teams have three stars, mm-hmm. but we don't talk about them being a super team because they're not at the top of the brackets. I think it's just it's based on how it happens. That's all. If yeah, it happens yeah. through the draft, cool. If it happens because everybody decides to join up and click up with each other, that's different. But it's also what players too. It's definitely like, what players. Like the Nets has Harden, Durant, and, and you know it's it's. Through I don't think the super team super shit super working. Stars. So that goes to my point. The players who selling shoes, the players who all over the yeah, the stars that the makes it a tr- yeah, the superstars. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. That they would have won this year, in my opinion, if they ain't get injured. No, no, it ain't. No, I, I 100 agree with you. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't be talking about Milwaukee if those guys wouldn't have got hurt, or if Giannis wouldn't have stepped under uh, uh, Kyrie's ankle. It yeah. would have been a whole different story. That was that was a bad. That was a <laughs> basketball play. No, no, I'm just talking about. I think the Bucks would have won in seven regardless. What, K, KD almost beat them alone. Eh. I think they would have won in seven. So you think if everybody was playing and not injured, Absolutely. the Bucks would have beat them? I think so. Uh, I think so. Tough. Just because I believe in defense. I think defense wins championships. Uh, Gian- Giannis is the most dominant player in the league right now, by far. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if they had Kyrie and James, nah. I just like them dogs that the Bucks got. Even somebody like P.J. Tucker, he cut from y'all cloth to me. Oh, no. Nah, hey, that's my boy. I-, I talked to him during the finals. You know what I'm saying? I, I, gave, I, remember some, you said that, yeah. I gave him some tips on how to guard CP. So, uh, C, C, P.J. Tuck is definitely one of us. Mm-hmm. Definitely one of us. One of my favorite players in the league. Have you been watching the, Olymp- uh, the Olympics? The I don't basketball? support the Olympics. Why I don't not? watch the Olympics. Why not? Well, I mean, why go and play games and try to win medals for a country that's constantly showing us they don't love us? Mm-hmm. I just, I just got to stand on that. You know what I mean? I just don't believe it. I just, they're constantly showing us that they don't rock with us. So, why go out there and try to make them look good? I don't get it. You got any thoughts on the, the team USA men's basketball team losing? Well, yeah, I mean it's just that the ga- the game of basketball is is is, is been global, and you know you got Luca, you got guys like that that dominate here. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. and these guys are getting better. These guys are playing in professional leagues as youngsters. Right. You know what I mean? So playing against the the Olympic team, this you know you're gonna get their best shot. Mm-hmm. You know, some of these guys will never get a chance to play against these stars. So I'm I'm not surprised at all because the bas- the game of basketball is growing uh, globally. Mm-hmm. Now, what would you say to people who who say you uh, hear you say that about the Olympics, but then say, "Well, you live here, Steve." I mean, I do I, shit. I, every we all live here. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. I mean, the the racist people live here as well. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? I, I mean, uh, that's just how I stand. I mean, perfect example. Uh, look at what happened with Shikari. But you have other other women that's uh, promoting CBD and stuff like that. But y'all ain't, y'all ain't holding her accountable. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it, it's it's a lot of reasons mm-hmm. why. You know, it's a lot of reasons why. I mean, it's it's a lot of BS rules. E- even with the the uh, the uh, the swimmers, they they couldn't wear certain things to protect their hair. Like right. it's a lot of stuff that's going on. But it's it's it's, it's culturally against us. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing about Stephen Jackson too, I noticed, man, you gonna be on time. Like, where you get that discipline from? Like, you, I, I mean, I know every time I'm around Steven, if he got to be somewhere at a certain time, he's there early, actually. Hey, man, I I, I grew up appreciating everything. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I appreciate being able to have an opportunity to come on here with y'all. So so I want to give y'all that same respect that I, that I would ask if you came on my show. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. I, I, I respect everybody. So with that discipline, was it was it easier to, like, move into the, the Muslim lifestyle, like to give up the smoking, the drinking, and everything else? Uh, It was because I don't, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's one thing I stood on. Um... A lot has happened in my life in the last two years. You know what I mean? I've been put in a position that I never thought that I'd be in, mm-hmm. you know, but I embraced it, and a lot comes with it, you know? And uh, it's, it's just changes that it wasn't hard to make because, like I said, I don't want to be a hypocrite, and I know, you know, I have to lead by example in a lot mm-hmm. of ways, and uh, I have to stick to that and stand on it. How did you get into that lifestyle? What got you into that lifestyle? I've been I've been change? practicing for seven years. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a close friend named Mozzie uh, from Atlanta, uh, he was a rapper, and I um, I used to be with him a lot, and I started like um, studying with him and being around him and and learning the culture, mm-hmm. and um, with um, everything that happened to George Floyd and me standing up for him and all that, I had a chance to sit with the minister. I've been around a lot of guys, Tone Trump and uh, Loon, and a lot of guys that I've been around, mm-hmm. and I woke up one morning and decided to take my shahada, and uh, it was just time. But it, a lot of people don't know. I put it on my page when in 2003, when I won the championship with Spurs, mm-hmm. I got on the podium and I said. I, all, all thanks to Allah back then. So that showed I was studying back then. So it was just a matter of time, and uh, I woke up one morning, and I just felt it was a day to take my shot. Now, weed is from the earth. Right. So why 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 is it weed bad? Yeah, anything that alters your mind, mm. you know, But I and, and that's what it says in the Quran. But I, I've, I've got different um, information from a lot of people, people that grew up Muslim that smoke, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I think it's, it's all about your relationship and what you choose to do, mm. you know what I mean? And I've been smoking since I was 12. You know, I I I, I, call, I own a small percentage of Viola with Al Harrington, so I I, I still I still promote and I still make money mm-hmm. off of it. But I I choose not to smoke because you know, like I said, I've been smoking my whole life, and the way I feel, you know, the the way I'm at where, where I'm at right now, I don't need it. So what do you do, what do you do now? What's your advice to like unwind? Uh, I might have a glass of wine every now and then, okay. but I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything that I used to do. Got you. Now with the Viola, you know they also have the products that enhance pleasure as well. Do yes. you use those? Yes, my my fiance is in love <laughs> with them. Uh, she she's in love with them. I think. Uh, Share the secret, Stephen. Do tell. Yeah, what is it on. now? Okay, it's, so it's it's sex products. It, it 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 makes the sex more intense. You know they got depositories. They got all kind of stuff where you can uh with what she can use, you can use, mm-hmm. she can put on you, and it just makes it way more intense. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, shout out to Michelle Harrington, Ash's wife. That's her company. That's her side of the company. And um, it's doing great. It's doing real great. Michelle sent some stuff up here for you guys, for your wife. I think y'all should try it, bro. Wait, yeah. now I don't remember getting that. You getting none of that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, you it definitely, to herself. You got all. No, no, I don't even. She sent me mine to my house, but she said they were sending some up here for you guys. I don't remember and getting that. She didn't tell package. us what it was. Hey, I, I, Feel I, free, I, though. I have, to, I have to swear by it, bro. It, it works. <laughs> It okay. works, and it, you don't even have to put it on you. Just you gonna go in the room one night, and she gonna be all showered up, and you gonna you gonna have no idea what she just done, <laughs> and she didn't drop it in there, and it's gonna go down. Have you ever tried anything like that before using the Viola products? I never have, no. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. But I'm glad she. I'm glad. That, I'm glad she sent it to us. It definitely sparked our room. Now, what's your relationship with Fadjo? I can't wait to see Fadjo on all the smoke. I think he on. Is he on this week? Yep. I know he gave you a TS chain. What's the relationship? So, I can, my first year in the NBA was here when I played for the Nets. And I was with stuff on Marbury. And, you know, around that time, I was really wild, yeah. I was mm-hmm. out of control. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about really out of control. And I was always out in New York by myself. And I met I met Joe through uh, Steph. And uh, Joe was wild at that time, too. Joe sure was. Mm-hmm. So we got a lot of things that I can't say on here that, we, that I got into with them. And uh, we became family then, over 20 years. And um, through this time, we, you know, we always talk and all that, but... He was around me at the time where I was really jeopardizing my career. I was really out here doing things that I wasn't supposed to do. And um, 
we kind of gravitated to each other around that time. And like I said, we've been family ever since. Was he the voice of reason around that time for you? He, no, neither one of That's us. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I was like, say, yeah, I can't yeah. see that. Nah, nah, it, was, it was the blind leading the blind back then. It was the blind leading the blind back then. But the fact that I was an NBA player, the fact that I never carried myself like that, mm -hmm. I've always carried myself as a regular dude, I think that's what made him gravitate to me. Word. So you think leaving New York at that time was better for you? Because New York yeah. was wild back then. But let me tell you. Y'all used to be at Sue's. Y'all was all over the place. <laughs> Jimmy's. Jimmy's. You know what I mean? And, like, I had never been out of Texas. You know, so when I got here, you know, I had the, the starch down pants still. The, you know, they was laughing at mm -hmm. me when I right. first got yeah, here. You know, not from here. <laughs> I was, sometimes I was a real country. And, you know, Steph and Joe took, took, took me in, took me shopping. You know, mm -hmm. Steph bought me a Range Rover, all kind of stuff. So when I came here, I, I, I was kind of overwhelmed. You know what I mean? I, like, I'd never been out here. Like, the, the Spanish women drove me crazy. Mm -hmm. I've never seen them that many beautiful women in one spot that they really didn't have much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was out of giving all my money to them. <laughs> I was out of giving all my I money really to them. didn't have much. You know Wait, what I'm saying? Wait, is this rendezvous we're talking about? Well, I, 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 was in, I was in Washington, I was in oh, okay. Washington oh, Heights. Right, right. You know, so I was in the Bronx. You know, they, them oh, people weren't rich. You know what I mean? But they I mean, were Michael beautiful. Cole, I mean, Michael Kors bags did you buy? Man, I was you? buying everything. Ava Rex. It was Ava Rex. I was buying Ava Rex jackets and all kind of stuff. Like that. Yeah, yeah man, I'm, I'm telling you. His name was El Stefano back then. Man, and, 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 and I went to Jimmy's every day. Damn near every day, and and I almost got married every day I went there. You know what I'm saying? And that that's no gas. That's Did you have no women gas. fighting over you? Back then? Yeah. Uh, nah, cause I think I I think I get I, I get it was enough to go around. <laughs> I was young, and I, I, I was young. I had enough to go around. Cause I, you can't didn't... go every day and talk to different women, and then they see each other, and then they. Man, I remember. I remember went to going to Sue's Rendezvous, and the first time I met uh, China, I fell in love with her. <laughs> oh, China, China. Yeah, yeah, back yeah, in the day, yeah, China. You know, yeah. China was yeah, the bomb. The yeah, 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 and I fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then about six months later, I went to another strip club and fell in love with another ch a chick. So like, <laughs> it, that, that's what it was back then. Yeah. Like I said, coming from the country to out here, it's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. That's saying a lot though, because the script clubs down south way better than the yeah but i was in texas it was it wasn't as big as it was in atlanta yeah, you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying then mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. so coming from, from from the country to here like it was night and day mm -hmm. goodness mm -hmm. gracious and well, women here are, are, can finesse you too women huh? here in, in new york will finesse you they'll figure well it. i ain't gonna lie they was more humble than down south the women here, mm -hmm. especially especially the Spanish women, they were appreciative mm -hmm. of everything. You know what I'm saying? And and that's that's the type of guy I was. So when I seen one girl that that appreciate the little things, I was willing to do everything for. Mm, that's the finesse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, she, they got me. So they got me. Michael Kors bag or two. That was back in the day, bro. They, they got didn't me. even talk about the old thing, old <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? Well, check for out a Spanish, for for a Spanish woman too. Is she Spanish? <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. They'll yes, she you. is. That was. This, <laughs> August 10th before everybody gets in trouble, man. We appreciate No, I, I want to ask Stephen though. I want to ask him, like, uh, back then, that was the, the era where, like, people was leaning on players, too, though, right? Yes. Like, the street dudes. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But, but that's that's one thing. That's why I love Joe. Mm -hmm. Everybody around him was genuine. Like I, like I even say on the show, a lot of people don't know this, but my, my, first, my first, when I came here, after I met Joe, everywhere I went, it was two people. Puerto Rican dudes like follow me and like and I didn't understand like oh these dudes trying to rob me mm -hmm. and after a while I realized that was two people that Joe had put on Yo me wow. to, to, to make sure the whole time I was here to wow. make sure I was straight you know what I mean so I never had to deal with with no nonsense or, or anything because he always protected me wow. Joe's still that guy too Joe to this day if, if, if somebody's out Joe, make sure you good. You get in the car. You back at the crib, man. I love me. Especially with the chandelier piece. Some, of the, some that. of the guys that's been in the family longer than me ain't got this one. That's I right. seen that. <laughs> now, to Fat now, um, I want to ask you about the big three too. Yeah, how's that going? It's going good. I'm coaching now. Mm -hmm. um, I walked away as the all-time leading scorer um, for three years, and uh, we know we had a, um, a a little layoff with the with the COVID. We missed a year, but it's back now. Joe Johnson back killing. Mm -hmm. Uh, my team is two and one, but Joe Johnson still leading the league, and uh, it, it's going great, man. We've been in Vegas the first three weeks, and uh, we're finna go to Dallas, Milwaukee, and Chicago now. But Cube, Cube, and Jeff are doing a great job at it. They were, they were making fun of Shannon Brown, but I was saying Shannon was still busting ass though. Now, nah, but a lot, a lot of like Shannon is not one of those guys that it's some guys that's in that in that league because they need the money. Mm -hmm. Shannon ain't one of them guys. Shannon loved the hoop, you know what I mean. But I think the guys that's in the league that's not coming in shape. You know, that, that's coming in for a check. They're kind of making the league look bad. And I think Q was trying to do a great job of weed those guys out mm -hmm. because, you know, I played the game one way. You know what I mean? That's why I can't play right now because I beat myself up so many years playing hard and, and respecting the game. If we continue to get guys in this league that respect the game, I think this league can last a long time. Now, I want to ask you one thing about Giannis. You mentioned him earlier. How much has your opinion changed about Giannis? Because you was, you was one of his heavy critics for a while. Yeah, I mean, but but people mis misunderstand what I be saying about mm -hmm. him. Like, 
he he is the most dominant player in the game right now, but his game is limited. If you know anything about basketball, he don't have that many moves. He's just dominant. He's big, strong, and athletic, but he does what he do best. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He don't go outside his game. I mean, I don't like the fact that he's a two-time MVP and shoot air balls at the free throw line. Mm-hmm. I've never shot an air ball. I asked Kobe that. Kobe said I wouldn't do it with my eyes closed or with my left hand. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So being a basketball player, I see things different than fans because I actually played the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there's no hate. I, I'm a big fan of Giannis, but I understand that his game is limited. And when I say – uh, Middleton is has more in his bag. It's because he does. He can shoot threes. He can post up. He can shoot off the dribble. He can do all. This, and he's the closer. If you know anything about basketball, he is the closer for that team. So it's not a knock against Giannis. It's just facts that I know from being a basketball player. Game six had to show you something though, especially what he did at the you free throw line. Me? What I just said. He's the most dominant player in the game. Yeah, he yeah, dominated yeah. fifty points. Uh, and then one thing about it. He stepped up. He had, he was 15 out of 17 from the free throw mm-hmm. line. He's never done that. Mm-hmm. So, but he he dominated the whole series, and that's why they won four. You know, four out of the six games in a row. Who you got next year? Is it too early to talk about? I don't think about? neither one of them teams are going to make it to the finals next year. No, they Be- Phoenix either. Because both teams dealt with a lot of teams that had injury. If you look right. at it, every round each team, de- both of those teams dealt with some of the best players being out. So, uh, if Brooklyn healthy, I definitely have them. And, and if, if the Lakers get a Chris Paul or a Russell Westbrook, it's a no-brainer. I think the Nets need the more Nets? dogs, man. Or if Golden State makes a trade, dog, they're going to be healthy. Oh, yeah. You think Kyrie stays with the Nets? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't I don't think they, they would break that up. They got to give it a, a good shot. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I think they can pull it off. I don't think sending Kyrie will, will make KD happy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they just decided to build this thing together. So I think that I think that would ruin everything they built if they got rid of Kyrie. I think the Nets need more dogs, man. They need more PJ Tucker types. They do, they do, and uh, you know because like like I said, you know Joe Harris. I, I like Joe Harris, but you got certain guys that are knockdown shooters in the in regular season, but when they come to the playoffs, they can't hit a house if they was in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I see I seen too many guys like this playing in my NBA career. Mm-hmm. Everybody can't make them shots when they count, and I think they need to have, get more guys like that instead of worrying about guys who who regular season players. Gotcha. All right. Well, again, Malice in the Palace, August 10th, Netflix, and we appreciate you for joining us, man, brother. Man, thank y'all for and, having me, as and, always. And make sure to listen to All the Smoke, man. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Shout out to Matty B. On the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Family. Everywhere you listen to podcasts. All right. Steven Jackson, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yo. Yeah.